Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the, this town council meeting to order. It's Scarborough Town Council, Wednesday, November 6th. This is our regular meeting, so I'll call it to order. Uh, first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Tony is not here for the roll call, but we're all present, so I don't know if any of the formalities are going down through. Um, and then tonight we are going to, at this point, adjourn into executive session, order number 19081, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I MRSA 4056C regarding the sale of property located at 246 U.S. Route 1. Map U4, Lot 56, in 9 Fairfield Drive, Map U4, Lot 66, the Public Safety Building. Um, so with that, uh, um, we'll to accept the motion. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? So those in the audience and those at home, we're going to adjourn, and our plan is to be back here at 7-ish time. Sure. Yeah, we should be normally scheduled. Yep. So thank you, and we'll adjourn. To accept your session today. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I'll put it on. Yeah. Bye, Rick.
What's the name of that? Perks. Are oh, they having trouble? All right. I, I didn't expect they'd do well. Right. Good evening again. Thank you. We are, have just come back from executive session, so we will continue with our agenda this evening. The next item on our agenda is item four, and we do have a special guest here tonight. Um, <laughs> So with that, Chief Mullen, would you like to come up and introduce us to our new member of, of the public safety team? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, sure. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think many of you are probably uh, already aware of this, but uh, Molly Grace came to us uh, on Monday. And uh, as a comfort dog, we uh, kind of floated the idea a while back of having uh, having a dog that could stay at the station and be, um, be a comfort to our first responders that, uh, that go to bad calls and so forth, and our dispatchers who, uh, who are on the phone with serious uh, calls and uh, just need a little, uh, little comfort when that's over. And also we have, uh, as you know, people <coughs> coming in for Operation Hope and for a variety of different other uh, traumatic events in their, in their lives and so forth, and um, so we're hopeful that she, uh, she will give them a little comfort as well. And um, we've, already, we've already experienced that once. We had a lady, uh, the first day that we had her, a lady came in and um, had been the victim of a crime and uh, noticed the pen. She was aware from social media of, uh, of, uh, that we were getting Marley, so she pointed to the pen in dispatch and asked if we had the dog yet. So I took Molly out and uh, sat down beside the lady and handed her over to her and, and Molly cuddled right up to her and gave her some kisses on the cheek and the lady, uh, the tears streamed down her face and she said that's exactly what I, what I needed. So I think she's, uh, she's going to do the job. She's, uh, she's a St. Bird Doodle. Her, uh, her, her mom was a 68 pound cross between a St. Bernard and a, and a full size poodle and the proud dad is a 14 pound uh, <laughs> <laughs> miniature poodle and this is the result and she's supposed to be about 40 to 45 pounds and she's been uh, she's been absolutely terrific so far she's uh, she's warm and cuddly and um, and our people have really taken to her and she has uh, she's very curious and she likes people that's exactly what we were looking for so there is, uh, there is an item on the agenda that I'll speak to later on about uh, a little bit more about Marley, but we just wanted to um, have you have a chance to see her. Uh, hey, Marley. Uh -huh. I, and I think um, with that, I think Tom would yeah. like you to introduce a new I member. I do. Of the a tough act to follow. I'm sorry, Lauren. Uh, <laughs> we've also invited uh, Lauren Dembski-Martin with us. Lauren's our new social service navigator, and we thought it was really important for the council mm -hmm. to, to meet her, put a face with a name. Uh, Lauren, you want to come up? <laughs> and as you walk, I'll just uh, kind of introduce you um, quickly. Uh, so this is a new position in our budget this year, one that we were very pleased to have uh, such great support from the council. So it's certainly one of the reasons she's here tonight. Lauren's a Scarborough resident since 2015, three kids, uh, one in the school system, as I understand. Uh, interesting blend of a BA in, in criminal justice and a master's in social work, so she really mm -hmm. has uh, the education there and has had uh, some really good professional experience. It really brings her to this position, so we're very pleased to have her part of the team. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome. Thank welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little tough, but um, I, I just wanted to add my two cents. Um, this was a position that we talked about at budget time, as I said, and, and uh, having somebody who can help folks who are struggling with a variety of different issues navigate the different systems that they need to to get the help that they need. And Lauren has come on board. We're very pleased to have her. She's, she's already getting uh, referrals from our officers. Um, and she has uh, already been involved in some, some situations that she's been very helpful for, and um, she's been very enthusiastic about, about this position. So I think it's going to work out really well. We're pleased to have her. Thank you. Um, with that, I'll open it up to general public comments, and that's for anybody who wants to comment on anything that's not on the agenda this evening. If anybody would like to come forward, please feel free to do so. 
I can tell the puppy is a distraction, so <laughs> <laughs> not seeing anybody come forward. I will close public comment. Next item on the agenda is item number five, which is minutes of the October 16th um, regular town council meeting. Um, is there a motion to So approve? moved. Second. Second. Is there any comments, discussion, minutes? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? I'm staying. Not present. Oh, thank you for that. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, next item on the agenda is item number six, adjustments to the agenda in their none this evening. Item number seven is items to be signed treasurer's warrants. I have done so and returned them to Tody. Um, and then that brings us to order number 19077, 7 p.m. public hearing and a second reading on the proposed amendments, chapter 302, Scarborough Town Council Rules and Policy, section 200. Um, Town Council Procedures, subsection 200.8, political activities. And I think we've had this on the agenda in the past. Um, does anybody need to have a refresher or any additional information about it? Is, Katie, was that? No, no. no. Would anybody from the audience like to speak to this issue this evening with comments? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussions or comments? Councilor Ford? Uh, we've had quite a bit of discussion about this, so I don't feel the need to get into the entire piece again, but my recommendation would be that um, the Rules and Policy Committee of next year, as that gets formed, consider um, maybe drafting something that's just very specific to behavior and, and activities within the council chambers. Because I think that was, in part, you know, while it was a well-intentioned policy, I think it fell down because it was a little bit vague in nature. And so something specific to that might be something good for them to look at. So I, I won't be here, obviously, but um, that's, that's my recommendation. Thank you. Anybody else like to comments, discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 19082, 7 p.m. public hearing in action on a new request for a food handler's license for Casey Perkins, DBA Honeycomb Cafe, located at 132 Pleasant Hill Road. Toby, is there any information for us? That uh, everything's in order. Uh, what I would recommend, I think I put in action, is that when the uh, they will not receive their food handlers until their occupancy. This is going to be a coffee. So with that, um, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this issue on the agenda? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. Any comments, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any is good? Um, um, the next item on the agenda is a pl <laughs> proclamation, proclamation. <laughs> 19002, after the request for a proclamation declaring Saturday, November 30th, 2019, as a small business Saturday. And I think just as from a historical perspective, Tom, this is this is something we've usually done. Yeah, we've had in the last four or five years. Yep. And so this really is, is sort of just consistent with what we've done in the past. Um, I will read the proclamation. And it is recognizing November 30th, 2019 as a Small Business Saturday, whereas the government of the town of Scarborough, Maine, celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 30.7 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.7% of all firms of paid employees in the United States and are responsible for 64.9% of net new jobs created from 2000 to 2018. And whereas small businesses employ 47.3% of the employees in the private sector in the United States, and whereas 94% of consumers in the United States value the contributions of small businesses make in their community, and whereas 96% of consumers who plan to shop on Small Business Saturday said the day inspires them to go small, independently owned retailers or restaurants that they have not been to before or would not have otherwise tried. And whereas 92% of companies planning promotions on Small Business Saturday said the day helps their business stand out during the busy holiday season, and whereas 
59% of small business owners said Small Business Saturday contributes significantly to their holiday sales each year. And whereas the town of Scatterboro supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our communities. And whereas advocacy groups as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Scarborough Town Council and the town manager does hereby proclaim Saturday, November 30th, 2019 as Small Business Saturday and urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. Signed and dated the 6th day of November 2019 on behalf of the Scarborough Town Councilor and Town Manager of Scarborough, Maine. So with that, is there anybody in the audience that would like to address or speak to this issue? Again, seeing none, we'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any comments, discussions? I, I think it's great that we're doing this. I, I think our local businesses can use all the support we can give them, so I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I echo that. Anybody else? All Start those? your Christmas shopping early. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. The next item is a resolution 19001, act on the request to support resolution 19001, extended producer responsibility EPR for packaging law as endorsed by the legislature in 2019 to support municipal recycling programs, LD431. Um, and with this, I think we have two counselors that promoted this, and I don't know, I have both listed, so I'm not who's sure who's gonna start also, off. Why don't I start and I'll throw it to Don. Sure, great. Uh, uh, the, this came before the <coughs> Sustainability Committee. It endorsed it uh, enthusiastically and unanimously. Uh, its intention is to pick up on the legislation passed by uh, the Maine legislature uh, this past session uh, to uh, promote uh, recycling programs and primarily to reduce the amount of packaging that is associated with any sort of product uh, uh, and by <coughs> placing a fee on, on the packaging uh, based on the extent of it. Uh, the uh, objective is, is to encourage people who are uh, obviously packaging products to try and be as uh, uh, modest as they can in that regard. So that's that's the, that part of it. And Don will cover the piece from <coughs> Echo Maine. This, yeah, this is also supported by Echo Maine. Uh, I think Mike Shaw and I have discussed this. And I want to thank uh, Councilor Donovan and the Sustainability Committee for um, getting us out in front on initiatives like this. Uh, uh, although this is uh, will be a pretty uh, groundbreaking in terms of uh, the, you know, this has not been passed by any other state legislature. You know, it's in place in Europe and other parts of the globe and North America and Canada, but, you know, this would be, you know, it's on the cutting edge here for us in this country. And uh, as one of the major contributors to environmental issues, I think it's important for us to stand behind efforts like this and promote them. So, um, you know, that. Uh, you may think about how what's happened with packaging, but uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, producers have already uh, gone in this direction. Uh, if you get laptops in the mail or that sort of thing, some of the technology companies are already there in terms of accepting responsibility uh, as producers, and they certainly have the bandwidth and the capability to do that. So uh, I support uh, Councilor Donovan and Jamie and the sustainability team, along with Echo Main and Mike Shaw. And this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to come up and address this issue or have comments? Again, seeing none, I'll close public comment. Um, is there a motion to approve this request? So so, oh, second. Second. Any conversation, discussion? Huh? So all those in favor? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is old business, and there is, there is none this evening. New business is order number 19083, act to authorize the town manager to execute any and all documents in the completion of the sale of properties located at 246 U.S. Route 1, map U4, lot 56, and 9 Fairfield Drive, 
MAP U4 Lot 66, pursuant to order number 17-115, that was approved by the Town Council on November 15th, 2017. And I'll let Tom mm -hmm. give some background. We just have had a discussion of this in executive session, and I'll leave sure. Tom to bring us up to yes. speed. <clears throat> yes, I was authorized back in November of 2017 um, to market the current public safety building for sale. Uh, there was a conscious discussion and decision at the time to uh, simply go through a, a conventional market sale, really so we could maximize value. Um, we, did, we are still counting on proceeds of this sale to help fund a, a portion of the new building next door here, so it's certainly appropriate to, that this matters before us now as uh, we're within sight of actually moving in next door. Um, that authorization uh, allowed me to negotiate uh, the terms of a purchase and sale agreement, the subject of which uh, was reviewed in executive session uh, this evening, and um, I'm hopeful that the council is supportive of the, the terms that have been negotiated. Uh, in essence, uh, uh, a couple uh, key things. Uh, the buyer of the property is Horton LLC. This is a, a Portland-based developer that has a, a very strong track record to look to, looking at a mixed-use project in, uh, that will include a residential component uh, that is intending to uh, build for workforce housing predominantly. Uh, we expect that there'll be restaurant uses in the front of the building, the old fire station, if you will, the brick portion. And frankly, the remainder of the building is a bit of a mystery to at least this buyer and to many others that have looked at it. Uh, there's some challenges just with its construction type and, and, and its reuse potential. So, um, but based on um, you know, what this buyer's done by way of due diligence, uh, obviously they feel strongly enough to move forward with the sale. I'm pleased to say that this <coughs> does deliver proceeds that, uh, that actually slightly exceed what we're expecting. So we're, we're making budget, so to speak. Uh, it's also an extremely uh, clean offer in that it, it is a cash offer, so there's no financing uh, challenges, potentially. Uh, there's a normal due diligence process that we'll be going through, and certainly things may come up. Uh, if they do, I'll certainly report those to council, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm extremely pleased uh, with this uh, proposal and the fact that it meets our budget requirements. So I hope you'll support uh, approving the purchase and sale agreement. Thank you. Um, and with that, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this issue this evening? Betsy Gleistein, 14 Longmeadow Road. Can you speak? Thank you. Can you speak to the zoning? Um, uh, Thank you. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Um, I should mention there are four contingencies part of this, uh, this offer. Um, the first of which uh, requires that the whole parcel be zoned to the TVC <coughs> district, which uh, currently it's bisected by TVC and, forgive me, I don't recall, to the rear as a residential zone of one type or another. Um, the town has tried to systematically clean up these occurrences around town where there's a zone boundary that bisects a lot. And so it's a very reasonable request. In fact, the request has been initiated through the Long Range Planning Committee and will be coming to the council shortly, probably in December. Uh, the second contingency deals with the density that's allowed. Uh, there's no special consideration. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're intending to work within the existing <coughs> land use regulations, so there's no special requirement or request being made. Uh, third contingency is that it's, of course, subject to the approval of this body. And the fourth one is that during the time of our occupancy, we'll keep it free and clear of any environmental hazards. Uh, we'll continue to occupy the, the property until we move in next door. Uh, so uh, from my view, those are fairly simple and standard and expected contingencies. And John, can you speak a little bit about just sort of the marketing activities and the sure. interest in the market and why you think this is a... Yeah, sure. We, we've good tested time. the market for almost 20 months now, and so we feel as though we've had good time in the market and had all sorts of interesting conversations, uh, produced I think eight bona fide offers during the course of that time. <coughs> For one reason or another, um, I didn't advance any of those to the point of this. Uh, many of them had um, extraordinary and sometimes unreasonable contingencies as associated uh, that really just in my view made them unworkable. So this is really appropriate that we have one that's fairly clean and, and meets our budget requirements. Um, so we feel quite confident that we've given it adequate time in the market and, and learned a lot in that process. And I'm confident that um, 
Well, I'm not confident um, passing this up and waiting for a better one to come, frankly, at this point. I'm sorry, Betsy Gleistein, 14 Long Meadow Road. I just had one more question. So um, you said uh, mixed, mixed, uh, mixed use residential and workforce housing. Is that what you said? The residential is predominantly what, what's termed as workforce housing. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Anybody else on public comment that would like to come up and speak? See none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve this act? So moved. Second. Any discussion or <coughs> comment? <coughs> Councilor Johnson? Are we allowed to speak about the specifics of the project a bit, Tom? Or? <coughs> okay. Um, so I just I think this is a great this is a great example of managed growth. Uh, these units are going to be incredibly small. I think somewhere between 700, uh, uh, approximately 750 square feet, one bedrooms, possibly just lofts rather than a bedroom. Uh, so I think this the the vision for this project is spot on for for the area. So I'm totally in support of this. Yeah, I'll echo that. It's I, I think I I can't think of anything a better use for the property. Of course, the owner would have discretion to do what they uh, choose with it, but what they're proposing and presenting would include, I think, 14 units that are workforce housing, which is they're defining as 120% of the area median income, and they would be sold units, not rented, so they'd be, there would be ownership there. Um, and I think it's a great vision for the property. I'm excited to have it come before us. That's what Katarina. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great <coughs> use. Um, it goes along with our vision. Uh, for the downtown Route 1 uh, corridor area. Um, and I, I'm really pretty excited about the fact that they are considering potentially doing a restaurant yeah. even in that in nice building. Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the combination of, you know, residential, restaurant, the walkability, all the factors we've been talking about in the comprehensive plan, I think this is a good match for that. And the price is right, so there you go. I should mention all of the uh, development will be subject to the normal site plan review process. Uh, so we're talking about concepts, but they they seem fairly confident in at least the residential component. Uh, but all of it will be subject to all the normal rigors of any other project in town. Councilman, uh, the developer has uh, undertaken this similar project in Portland, so uh, there's some experience based. Uh, effort here that uh, uh, we expect that a lot of the kinks are already out of the project and therefore it's probably going to go very smoothly. And I guess the only thing I'd echo on it, you know, I think a lots of real estate, a lot about is timing in the right place, right time, I think. And I think, as, as Tom has suggested, we've been in the market and, you know, we've had some offers. But they are starting to say folks are really getting nervous about we've kind of had enough market for a while now. I know a lot of corporations are starting to get nervous about what the next 12 months might bring, whether that will be a downturn in the economy or not. So this seems like a pretty opt opportune time to take advantage of what's on the table. It meets a lot of our needs. It meets the budget requirements. So I think uh, I'll echo what everybody else said. Just the last piece of uh, information. Um, <clears throat> as I recall, and Peter, you were certainly here, and, and you may recall, the council convened a uh, citizens committee to uh, work on the public safety building. One of their initial tasks was to consider reuse of that property. And uh, it's 2.1 acres or so. Um, it's not challenging to come and go from, uh, but uh, through a, a lengthy review process, the committee advised the council that they really didn't see any current or future public use that was viable. And so that was one of the pieces that informed uh, the decision to actually uh, move ahead with the sale of it. So I just wanted to say that there was a careful evaluation of potential reuse for our own purposes. So with that, everybody ready to vote? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Last item on, well not the last, um, order number 1984 is act on the request from the police department to receive a donation from Mar St. Pierre mm. and Leanne Rispera de Haller in the amount of $2,500 for a comfort support dog for the public safety department. I got the feeling that's we have already met. The, oh, you lost your lost your friend? Yeah, we we uh, she went back. Um, yeah, just uh, a, a little bit um, before uh, 
I, I had mentioned before how uh, you know what the consideration was for this uh, animal and and so forth, and how we thought that she would be used, and and how she thought we thought she would help our both our department and the citizens. So, so when we uh, when we started looking around, we we looked at a number of different uh, different dogs and looked in shelters and <coughs> lots of different places and. And we finally uh, we finally found Marley, and we put it out on fa on uh, Facebook, looking for people to help name her. And we had 1,400 and something uh, submissions that we formed a small committee and and went through and identified uh, a short list of those. One of those was Marley, which um, really spoke to me uh, for a number of different reasons. One being the the movie Marley and Me, I I thought it was a quite a movie. Um, but also, uh, along the way, we had two individuals that came forward who wanted to uh, donate money t for the dog. And uh, those people were Marla St. Pierre, who's, I think you're all familiar with Marla. She's retired in July after 39 years with our department, always been a strong supporter of our canine program, uh, loves, loves animals, loves dogs, and wanted to, uh, wanted to be a part of that. And also, uh, Leanne Risbera Delher. Um, who uh, who wanted, uh, on behalf of the Risbera family, to do something in memory of uh, Rocky and Marsha. And uh, so those two uh, ladies teamed up and wanted to uh, wanted to make sure that we had this dog at, uh, at no cost to, to the department. So we really appreciate that. And, and this uh, agenda item is to, to ask that you would accept that donation. We hope you do it because the dog's not going back and we don't have to <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe Taker's the dog. Box. That's the problem. Oh, fair enough. Um, is anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this? If not, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve the request? Or? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I'd be pretty I surprised that I'm going to be very enthusiastically supportive <laughs> of this uh, particular. But I, I did have just a question, or I'm uh, curious. Um, it, it occurred to me maybe this is something that we would create an ongoing. Um, I mean, there's going to be ongoing care for dogs are expensive, um, and that can things can come up. So vet care, I don't know, just mm -hmm. something to think about. Mm -hmm. I know another group in town that might have your back, Chief. Is all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great suggestion. Yeah, I I wanted to echo that. I think uh, it's incredibly generous of. Uh, the donors to do this for the town. Um, but I, I suspect there's also a lot of other goodwill in the community. And I know that there's been a lot of gifts already received by the police department. And I think setting up some kind of fund to help with the ongoing care of, of Marley would be a great idea. The name Marley is the first two syllables of Marla and Leanne. Right? Today. Okay. <laughs> wow. You're so smart. I just, I just figured that out. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, a brilliant idea. I know um, way back in the day when uh, Chief Moulton was really pushing for Operation Hope, I know Jessica Holberg and I jumped right on that, and I'm just so excited about um, his ability to be forward thinking. Uh, about the needs of the people who serve in, as first responders, as uh, having married to one who's now retired. Um, it can be very traumatic for people after being out at accident scenes and crime scenes and just the stuff that goes on. Uh, so I just think this is a great idea. I'd love to see all the police departments have comfort dogs as well as their wonderful canine dogs. So. Great idea. I fully support this. Great. Anybody else has seen it? No, I would echo to what everybody said. So I guess with that, all those in favor? Yes, thank you. Thanks. <coughs> the next item is 1985. Act on a request to certify the results of the municipal elections held on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. And this may be a contest of who has the voice. <laughs> <laughs> Presented for certification by the Town Council are the, are the election results for the municipal elections that were held on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. For Town Council, there were two seats, three-year terms. Uh, William Donovan, 1,948 votes. Betsy Gleistein, 2,810 votes. 
Kenneth Johnson, 2,172 <coughs> votes. Robert Rowan, uh, 1,972 votes with 664 blanks. Uh, for the Board of Education, two seats, three-year term. Alicia Giftos, 3,133. Brian Shumway, 2,218. Kristen Turner, 2,732 with 1,482 blanks. Trustee for the Sanitary, Sanitary District, two seats, three-year terms. Joseph Carroll with 3,434. Uh, Paul Rodriguez with 3,399. And there were 2,733 blanks. Trustee for the Sanitary District, filling a one-year term expiring in 2020, was Ruth Summers, 2,801. Blanks were 1,982. Question one regarding the artificial turf. The yes vote was 2,097. The no vote was 2,504, and there were 182 blanks. Question two was on the pumper truck. The yes vote was 2,497. The no vote was 2,096, and blanks were 145. Question two, uh, question three, the land bond, sorry. Yes was 2,688, the no was 1,950, the blank was 145. There were approximately 17,365 active voters on our voter registration list for this election. It doesn't include the uh, election day registration. We had 4,783 voters who cast ballots for the November 5th election. There were 1,893 absentees issued, of which we processed 1,798. Uh, the voter turnout for this election was 28%. Mm -hmm. And the swearing in for the newly elected officials will be on Wednesday. Well, for the town council and the sanitary <coughs> district will be November 20th, 2019. For the Board of Education, as soon as the results are certified, they're sworn in, and they'll be to, uh, tomorrow because they have a meeting tomorrow night. Uh -huh. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Is there a motion to approve and certify the results? So moved. Second. Any discussion, comments? Councilor Catalina? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to congratulate everyone uh, who won in this election. Um, I, I'm uh, pretty disappointed, though, with the electorate. 28% uh, turnout's pretty low. Um, when you've got 17,365 active voters in town, um, yeah, folks, you need to turn out and vote. Um, it's it's not only your right to do so. I think it's your duty. So hopefully, you know, people will get more involved in the future. Thank you. Yeah, Councilor Yeah, I'd just like to take this opportunity to invite uh, the entire town of Scarborough to Thanksgiving this day, this um, this year. To your house. Yep. Well, that's no, generous. It's, that's generous. Actually, I'll be at the brand new Councilor Johnson's house. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right on Juneberry. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else to see me on the election results? Oh boy, um, it's gonna be a long. Three that was years. it. That was my one. <laughs> no, that was my one for two years. You'll never hear it again. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Um, item number eight is non-action items. I think we have a report out from the finance committee. I heard it was a quick and brief report out. <laughs> we will do our best. In fact, we have visual aids to assist that. It's ten hours. <laughs> Lots of pressure here. Councilor So there are two items here uh, coming from the <coughs> Finance Committee uh, while folks are getting set up. The first one is uh, uh, financial uh, health metrics, or, or as we've called it alternatively, uh, a dashboard to help us track uh, indicators of our, of our financial health and, and directionally how it's going. So I, I'm going to turn the floor over to Larissa, who's done great work on this and has displayed great patience and perseverance uh, <coughs> despite many iterations uh, and <laughs> it's been very helpful in terms of looking at other sources and really um, combing through a lot of resources to help us use this as a tool, use this as a leadership and management tool uh, for financials and, and hopefully to be reviewing it now on a, on a quarterly basis. 
And can I add some color commentary or ask Marissa <laughs> to add, at, how, how, many, how many councils and generations have you been working on this dashboard? Oh dear God. Gonna... So you hired me, well, Tom hired me in October of 2016, and I think we started working on this in January, February of 17. Okay. So we've been at this for quite a while. With lots of different personalities and a lot of different faces. So. Yes, it's true. We finally had a breakthrough in <laughs> September's meeting um, where I was given permission to go to two pages instead of one. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> Johnson, that was right there. So, that was brilliant. Yeah, so that really took care of a lot of the angst and challenge associated yeah. with this. Um, I do apologize for the lackluster design, not my skill set, but I think the math is probably pretty strong and that's really why you, you know, hired me. So um, the dashboard metrics, I'm sorry about the size. I'm there we go. Oh, there we go. So page one, um, <coughs> these metrics were uh, discussed at, <coughs> sorry guys, at length um, by a couple of different councils. Um, first set of these are all debt related um, and these are coming out of the town's f financial and fiscal policy and um, the idea was to have a dashboard that in one quick look you could see where these metrics stood for the town. Uh, the idea is to have them updated after the audit is done. Um, the audit is usually done towards the end of the calendar year. So the idea was to have these metrics updated and presented to Finance Committee in Q1 of the calendar year following that audit completion. So first four, debt service as a percent of annual revenues, total debt as a percent of full state valuation, debt per capita, and total debt per capita as a percent of per capita income. Uh, the Dashboard continues down. The, if there is a goal or a limit that's listed in the financial and fiscal policy, it is shown in the uh, row below the first indicators. If it's a green arrow, it means we're heading in the direction of that goal. If it's a red arrow, it means that we are heading up away from the goal. It also shows a three-year average of where we've been, so you can get a sense of, of what that looks like over time. And then the next two boxes, these are also decided on in the last couple of months here. The idea is to take these same metrics and look at both what we're calling a fiscal cohort and a main cohort. So the GFOA is a governing um, finance officers association <coughs> and they release each year a set, a data set that includes all of the municipalities in the United States and Canada that have won the award for excellence in financial reporting, which the town of Scarborough has won now 13 years in a row. And so it seemed like a good cohort to look to for um, similar reporting styles. Able to narrow it down to communities in New England that have between 10,000 and 30,000 residents. And when putting Scarborough into that cohort, we actually hit the median for both population and median household income, which really I think does give support for it being a decent fiscal cohort for us to be looking at. The next one down will be the main cohort, and that will be based off of some work that the school board did a couple of years ago, creating a, a cohort of communities in our nearby area here in the state of Maine. Those numbers are not filled out yet. The Finance Committee gave uh, permission to wait until their January, February meeting to fill those out. I'm going to need to get the data in it and work with it. The final piece on this is looking at each metric's uh, risk score, and this was a little bit of um, recent work, the idea being we can give you the number of, of what each of those metrics is coming in at, but what does that mean in the long run? So let's go back so you can see, actually see the numbers we're talking about. And what is 12.97% of is debt service as a percent of annual revenues? Is, is that a good place to be? Are we, what would happen if we weren't there? And so this risk score is really about, um, and it was done this year with <coughs> myself assessing the risk and our, our municipal advisor, Joe Kutara, assessing the risk, but the Finance Committee will need to establish a, broader base of people to be assessing this risk, maybe the chair of the finance committee, the town manager, council chair, as well as the municipal advisor continuing. And each of these metrics was given as two scores between one and five. The first one being, how likely is it that we will move away from our goal? One being not likely, five being highly likely. And the second one being, if we did move away from our goal, what would the financial impact to the community be? One being no real impact and five being a significant impact. And then those two scores are multiplied together. So if you have, so let's say that there, um, let's use one of the, low, the lowest score we have here on this chart is unrestricted fund balance as a percentage of revenues. So both Joe and I felt like there was not all that much chance of that happening in any great degree. And if it did, our, our immediate or even our, 
our moderate future financial health would not be severely impacted. So it ended up being multiplying the, our two scores together, uh, each of us having our scores multiplied, that two five point scores, and then averaging them together, 1.5 out of 25. I know that that's a lot of words that I've just tossed out at you. You do have a memo, I believe, in your packet that mm -hmm. kind of summarizes this so that it's easier to understand maybe in written form than in verbal. So the risk assessment is really just there to help people understand what we think is both the likelihood and the impact of these metrics should they head in the wrong direction. And then um, those risk factors were used to kind of come up with this gauge at the bottom here. Um, kind of the, there was a, for the first two years of this work, there was a lot of interest in having this particular style of gauge so that you could kind of quickly get an idea of where we stood. And this is reflecting those risk scores on average. And then the final piece over here in the bottom is we do have debt limits that are both established by the state as well as our financial and fiscal policy. And this will just be updated each year to allow folks to quickly see um, where we currently stand as far as what we, are, what we are allowed to by policy take on for debt. And so if you'll look, you can see that um, the fiscal and financial policy gives a total debt of 8.5% of our, I believe, total value can be held in, um, in indebtedness. And we are currently holding 2.5%. And you'll see in that far column, what a debt margin is, is how, much, how many dollars are still available by policy. No one's recommending we do so, but still available by policy to be bonded. And currently, according to our policy, we could still take out another $243 million worth of indebtedness. Um, and just kind of scrolling back up to those last four metrics, <coughs> um, we have unrestricted fund balance as a percentage of revenues, non-property tax revenue as a percentage of assessed value, general fund expenditure as a percentage of assessed value, and then the last one is a qualified applicant <coughs> to the tax assistance program, and that's our senior property tax relief program. Hmm. Any questions? Impressive. All set? <coughs> Thanks, Good. Larissa. Uh, so I think as a, just as a management tool, one footnote here is that uh, you know, if you look at the, the debt figures, you know, those are, there's lots of, of additional room for us to borrow more debt. But the, I think the, you know, for example, uh, you know, one learning here is that in despite of that, we have some problem areas for us to focus on uh, both in the short and the long term. So that's the intent of this is, is to help uh, direct us uh, for uh, focusing on a couple of priorities to try to address in the upcoming budget cycle and our other longer term planning activities. Thank you. Do, do we have a date that this would go live for the public? It's not, it's not there yet, right? Because we want to fill in some Absolutely of these. Absolutely not. You're right. So these are, uh, these are reflecting the audit <coughs> from 2018, and they don't have any of the cohort data yeah, in. Right. So I, we can certainly put this up if you wish us to, but it will remain blank until uh, that cohort data has come in. And we do have to purchase that data every year. So I, yeah. my preference would be to wait until January, February, when we update it with the most recent sure. numbers to make it go live. <coughs> and then it would be housed, I think, on both the, it could be put in the part of the website where the finance committee information is, but it should also go on the finance department section of the website under their accounting. Sure. Great. So just to put a, a, a little color to that, <coughs> uh, our goal would be ultimately to move this out of non-action land into something that the council will actually would vote on and then confirm its use and timing for that. So um, that, that is something that is our intent. and and will be the focus of, of the committee work coming forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the intent was to share the work product to date. And if there's any comments or thoughts, let us know. <coughs> but our intent was to make it easy in a two-pager, not a one-pager, for us as, you know, that, not our, that are not way down in the weeds and the financial to say, okay, where are we going, how are we doing? But more importantly, also something for the public to look at. So we're all on the same page and we start talking about debt or whatever. And this has been a, a labor, I wouldn't say it's a labor of love for you. Oh, come on now. It's been nothing but joy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for someone who's been on the finance committee my whole time on the council, it's like it's finally got through the, <laughs> through the wickets. So I'm, I'm happy. So <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly, if, if, if all of the finance committee members are happy, I'm sure the rest of the council will have no further suggestions of how to modify. <laughs> <laughs> you Thanks very well much, played. Larissa. Thank you for your great work on this <laughs> and your persistence. Thank you.
So there is one other <coughs> item on the, in this non-action section uh, coming out of finance, and that is uh, we've been working over the past several months uh, together with our counterparts on this, the Board of Ed side of the House um, in a series of workshop meetings. Uh, um, we've been holding them roughly once, uh, once a month for the past four, four or six months or so. I'm pleased to report that we're um, ready to make a, a recommendation or a, a joint resolution for the council to uh, deliberate on, to vote on actually as an action item uh, in the next uh, town council meeting. Um, basically, reflecting on last year's performance, it was well accepted that we struggled with uh, an approach to try to uh, hit a target in the first reading. And uh, for a variety of reasons, we discovered we were uh, not really focused on, on all of the measures that we might, number one, and number two, uh, it wasn't necessarily lead us in, leading us in the direction of the ultimate goal, which we've used over the past several years of, a, of roughly a no greater than a 3% mill rate increase. So over the course of this, these discussions, um, <clears throat> The, the committee is going to be coming forward with a recommendation that we add another measure, that we add a measure for the first reading that would be uh, achievable and, and, and able for both the town and the school to, to plan and to, to hit. And, and that would be a, uh, a, net, a, a net budget target. Um, and uh, we, we have some figures that we'll be sharing that, this, this, that explains the range of that over the past several years, but generally that has been in the neighborhood of, of two to three percent for the town and five five to six percent for the, for the school. So uh, we'll be doing that as a first first pass exercise that on on the way of uh, ultimately getting the the mill rate uh, to that target of uh, of less than three percent. So now all of this is advisory in nature, uh, but we're, we thought the discussions were very fruitful and helped us. Uh, I know particularly on the town side to understand some of the pressures the schools were under in particular with not having a lot of data on funding uh, and not being really able to execute a target that um, that we were hoping to set uh, in the past budget cycle. So this this will also be continuing work, but uh, we're I uh, just wanted to frame out the elements of that at this meeting and we will actually have a, a formal document to present to the council on the 20th of November for for a vote. And I guess for, you know, sort of just as a member of the Finance Committee, too, Don, what, what, what we heard was we had a target of, a, a, you know, a tax rate increase of 3%. What we didn't give to each individual side of the budgeting, the school and the town, a net margin target. And that's what we tried to work through. And those numbers that Don just shared is historically where the town has come in, where the school budget has come in, which has produced a 3% or lower tax increase. <clears throat> so for the school, it really gave them some peace of mind that if they had that target, the net margin target, which they can manage, that should produce what we're looking for. So it gives them a little bit more of a goalpost to work toward in that first review. And we expect <clears throat> this will be a unanimous recommendation from both <coughs> the town uh, and, and also the school, which, which in itself we feel is a, is a major accomplishment heading into our next <coughs> budget cycle. Anybody else want to, Paul, you have a few No, I, look, I, look, I think those, um, you know, Don and probably not the most popular guy in the room wanting to meet every month for joint finance, but I, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it was, it was very fruitful. I thought it was a great exercise. And as someone who has been relatively vocal about um, the shortcomings, in my view, of the 3% target, uh, I feel like we walked out of there with every party at the table feeling better about the process, um, and um, and, and I, I'm I'm happy that the the school side is as just as enthusiastic about this as 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 we are. So I, I think it's a great step in the right direction, and it may, it's going to make the communication piece a lot easier at first read. I believe so. Well done. So with that, I think those were both. Anybody else have any questions, comments, Councilor Well, I probably shouldn't just keep my mouth shut since it's my last <laughs> meeting, but um, I love the concept. I caution the 
like when when you when it comes out to me that says we're going to vote on that at the next meeting, um, and you haven't you have two brand new uh, counselors being sworn in, and not necessarily having conversations or time to work it, I, I might push it out a couple meetings. I might ask you to think about that, maybe present it in one way, and then and give some time because if I've learned anything over my three years, it's that we we want to make change, which is great. And I think this is really positive change, and I love that you're out in front of it. But give it some time to marinate, and give people some time to get on board, because that's going to make everything easier in the end. So, um, and I know I wasn't at your meetings, and I know you did a ton of work on it, but you did a ton of work in that small microcosm versus uh, including everybody, and you've got two brand new faces um, filling seats. Who? Uh, so anyway, it just appreciate the tactical suggestion. We'll take that under advisement. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. So with that, I think that concludes that non-action item discussion. <laughs> Next item is item number nine, standing and special committee reports. Um, I don't know if which end of the table, want, anybody want to volunteer to go first? Sure. Yeah, okay, sure. So I, I uh, <clears throat> have the uh, Community Center Advisory Committee with Paul, and Paul will fill in any blanks that I, that I miss. The committee continues to meet weekly. Uh, they have completed the survey work and analysis, which received a uh, surprisingly robust response from the community. There was just over 1,800 um, responses to the survey that was distributed online and through um, paper at town hall at various areas uh, across town. Um, one of the questions that we posed to the committee um, through the charge was to gauge the public's imp uh, interest in a swimming pool. And I think the survey very clearly shows that there's significant interest in a swimming pool in the in uh, having a swimming pool in Scarborough. There's a lot of other insights that can be gained from the survey that will help the committee as they move <coughs> forward with the next steps, which is coming up with a design with EDGE um, that might incorporate a community center into the facility that they're planning to build. And, uh, and then there'll be some analysis on the financials associated with that. So um, the first step was uh, very well received in general and provided a lot of good insights and uh, very happy with the committee work to this point. Um, they're under a tight timeline, and uh, I think we all knew that when we, when we said it, and, and they understand that. Um, but so far, I think they're doing really good quality work, so I'm happy. Is that it? That's all yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah uh, to add to that, I think it's, I, I've said this, I believe, every single meeting, but just to reiterate, uh, th this is a process, and we don't know what it looks like right now. So I think it's, it's important that um, we have this group of people that are putting in a ton of time and gathering a ton of information. And uh, we are nowhere in the place to discuss decision making right now. It's it's literally just been a very fruitful po process to to see what the community wants and to see if, if this is the right fit. Um, and I and I have to um, commend the um, the edge guy, the edge guys and Rocky. They've been to every single meeting. Some combination of the groups have been there and they've been active in the process and they've been asked. Uh, they're willing to answer every question we've thrown at them, which at times are you know not easy questions. So. That's been great. Um, on my side for the BOE, the, uh, the building steering committee for the possibility of a new uh, consolidated school, I believe they have met two times at this point. Uh, I have met with uh, the chairperson, uh, Ms. Casalionis, and requested that we somehow get a town council liaison onto that committee, um, which might not entail rewriting the charge, but amending it or, or some sort of process. Uh, Everybody has seemed receptive to that, so it should be my goal by next next, next meeting to perhaps we discuss who is the, the liaison for that committee. Um, a little bit of clarification with that. If the steering committee is then going to create a charge for a building, a, a more specific building committee once, once they're done with their work. Uh, so there's essentially a committee to form a committee, um, which continues my love of local government but the um so yeah we that's where we are with that like i said i i've approached the boe they, they've been receptive we should have a liaison by i don't know if they're meeting weekly but i would i would guess we're going to have a liaison within a week or two or after this next council meeting with a new council um for me just the communications committee i wanted to thank larissa crockett for a lovely send-off it was my last official committee meeting and i arrived to um pierogi and grapes mm -hmm. and cheese and some cider and it was very sweet and I really appreciated that so um, 
thank you very much. Uh, as far as committee work, we did discuss uh, the future of the roundtables. Uh, they were not particularly effective this year. Uh, <coughs> there is um, some discussion as to whether or not they should move forward in a quarterly fashion or on an issue based uh, as needed. Um, but I'm going to leave that for the future committee to decide. I think the crux for me is everyone agreed that communication is hugely important, but not able to really get teeth into that in how that committee can positively affect uh, the council's work uh, and support the town. So there's still a lot of discussion ahead uh, regarding that, and <coughs> I trust you guys will carry it forward. Thank you. So, Katarina? Yeah, um, Ordinance Committee, I believe I mentioned that we finally hammered out a draft of the potential marijuana ordinance, which took quite a bit of doing, uh, as Councilor Hamill will attest to. Uh, it was like putting, um, threading a needle, shall we say. Um, we've had a, one meeting, I'm looking at Larissa today, that uh, Councillor Hamill said was pretty well attended. Um, Councillor Hamill, how many people went to the Well, I, I think that we had uh, between a half a dozen to a dozen people, okay. uh, and it's the beginning, I think, of we're going to start to see the public come onto the scene here as we get closer to yeah. town council review and discussion. And we're going to have another one next Tuesday at 6 o'clock here at um, Town Hall. Uh, I can make this, I could make today's, but I uh, will definitely be there next week. We do want, you know, some more public information and then it will come up to the council for, for uh, work. And I think that's all I had to report on at this point. Uh, the Pest Management Committee met. Uh, this is a very dedicated uh, group of individuals. They're very committed to uh, trying to advance the concepts of uh, organic uh, organics for managing uh, gardens and, and lawns. Uh, they are developing an impressive education program. Uh, I was very impressed by uh, the first draft that was circulated at the meeting. Uh, last week, uh, they have uh, are in now in the process and are finalizing the report to the town council of the committee's efforts over the last six years. Uh, 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 they're quite ready to render that report to the town council and hopefully do it as a part of a workshop this fall. Thank you. A couple of items on appointments committee. Um, uh, We've been working with Liam Gallagher, and he's been helping us to uh, to confirm the timeline and the process that we'll be following for uh, the, the town manager's uh, performance evaluation and employment agreement renewal, which is going to be coming up in the next cycle. So we uh, will plan to uh, to <coughs> review this uh, in the in the next town council meeting on November 20th. Uh, this is a little time bound, so we do have deadlines on this one that we have to. That we have to stick to um, so we'll be looking forward to that work and have appreciated his health and help and support throughout in that effort um, there are public and private aspects to that and we'll be careful to make sure that any of the you know terms and details and the actual nego renegotiation of the contract would be you know taking place uh, you know in a private setting and other other aspects <coughs> pertaining primarily to the timing uh, and the steps in the process we will be sharing them publicly um, the other thing I would say is that we're gearing up for the next cycle of appointments uh, for various committees that we have in town. There are uh, dozens of committees that we have, and um, it's these. This is really where the, you know, the gears of the of the machine work, and we need uh, good talent and people that are committed to put in long hours to help with that. So. Tody will be helping us to communicate uh, that upcoming cycle and we'll look forward to hitting the ground running to try to get those vacancies filled as quickly as possible <coughs> with, with talent. And I'd like to re reflect on the ad hoc community center effort as a good example of the mm. sort of talent that we have in our own community. I mean, we have highly skilled people who are experts in a number of areas and uh, I think it uh, is a great opportunity for us to tap into that talent pool and to get folks like that engaged and involved. Thank you. 
And with that, I guess, town manager's report, Tom? Sure. A couple of quick points of interest, uh, I hope. Um, as the council, I think, is aware and the, the public, uh, we have struggled for some time now with our recycling program uh, in many facets. But uh, uh, among that, we've had a number of locations around town. We used to have three locations for uh, excess recycling, uh, which really ended up being critical for some folks, uh, particularly those that live in condos, but also those of us that on a weekly basis might have an overflow of cardboard or what have you. There really needs to be a place to, to bring that material um, we used to be at Walmart in Hannaford. We've, we've both been uh, nicely asked to, to find another location, and understandably <laughs> so. It's, it's a kind of a messy operation, so to speak. And so we've been limited to, for some time now to one location down here on Route 1, uh, just across the way here by Maine Veterans Home. And we've tried any number of variations uh, to deal with the ongoing issues of contamination and really containment. Um, the material blows around, and it's... Uh, uh, on one hand, the site is ideal because it's uh, fully exposed, and we think that's a deterrent um, to, to bad behavior. Uh, but on the other hand, it's fully exposed, and everyone can see uh, what's going on there. And not surprisingly, the, uh, the abutters uh, aren't terribly pleased with having that kind of operation. So uh, after long thought, we, we are proposing to relocate that down to Public Works. It will be um, not behind the gate, so it's accessible. Uh, the downside, obviously, is that is a bit off the beaten path, but we also have a fairly constant activity down there with personnel. Our, our fuel pumps are there, so police and school buses are, are in the area pretty thoroughly. Um, so we don't see any uh, um, depletion in service. It's just going to be an alternative location. So we're looking to make that switch as of December 1st, and we'll be doing all sorts of messaging ar around that. Uh, our challenges continue with respect to contamination in that waste stream. And historically, that has not been a problem, but EcoMaine, for very good financial reasons, has, uh, has been keeping very close uh, attention to contaminated loads, and there's extra costs associated depending on the, volume, uh, the, the amount of contamination. So it's a continuing challenge for us, um, but we think that's going to be a better location for us. And I should also mention, selfishly for us, uh, particularly on a Monday morning, Public Works will spend two or three hours on a Monday morning just cleaning up for you know, the weekend's activity. Hmm. We're there on a daily basis during the workday and we can manage it. Um, for them to move the, the equipment, and it's often uh, several pieces of equipment from Public Works to this location is more time and expense. So having it right on site will be, will be able to attend to the need far more efficiently and cost effectively. Um, I wanted to mention, uh, simply because it was mentioned in these chambers, the town was considering refunding some of our existing debt. Uh, the bond market looked favorable late summer, early fall. Uh, during the course uh, of our process here, though we moved, I think, as quickly as we could, the market's changed again. And so uh, at this point, we'll not be pursuing that refunding. It does not make financial sense for us to do so. Uh, we'll continue to watch the market and come back with you to you with any opportunities uh, that we were aware of. Uh, tomorrow, we are convening for second round of interviews for the assessor position. Uh, this is a, an important position, as you all know. Uh, pleased that we have some very viable candidates. We did invite Councillor Clucci to be part of that process. He has accepted, and I think we'll be there uh, as part of the interview team tomorrow. And perhaps uh, when you get back together in two weeks, we'll be able to announce uh, the appointment of a new assessor. That's my hope. Um, also, to put on your calendar, uh, as many of you are aware, in the credit enhancement agreement with Scarborough Downs, with the Downs Project, we negotiated, among other things, an annual reporting requirement. This is a public report, uh, and we've actually set a date for December 18th for that to occur. So I'll work with future council chair about the logistics, but it was important for them and for us to get a date on the calendar. And that will be interesting enough to the day that the CEA was approved, um, coincidentally. And lastly, I certainly want to congratulate uh, and, and thank uh, Katie and Bill for their service. And it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, given the interest and commitment we have with the community, I know you won't be strangers. You'll probably, <coughs> probably be doing committee work and pleased to continue uh, working with them in that capacity. And certainly congratulate and welcome our new counselors elect, uh, Glystein and Johnson. I'll be reaching out to you and looking to get together if, uh, if we can to go through some orientation, and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. And, and I guess I'll add, too, uh, <coughs> this evening we 
certainly knew. <coughs> excuse me. We certainly knew Katie clearly made her intentions known that she was not running again. But with some of the changes, what we're going to do is at the next council meeting have a more formal sort of thank you and appreciation for both. Councilor Foley. They just can't get enough of us, Bill, and want us to come back <laughs> is right. what they're saying. Right. So, so we... So we will kind of circle that wagon next time and kind of say our thanks and appreciation for all that both have done over the years. So thank you. So with that, I think it's now councilor member comments. And then I'll start at this end of the table. Councilor Campbell. So, so I just wanted to thank uh, the town staff and uh, Tody's uh, group in particular for executing an another in a long <coughs> series of uh, of elections, you know, you make it look easy. We know it's not, <laughs> no, it's not easy at all. And uh, also doing a great job of wrestling with new <coughs> technology. So, um, so really appreciate it. And uh, I know we owe a debt of gratitude to you and to the other folks that support that effort. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, just want to address. Uh, I'm glad to see the chief in the audience. Uh, my term expires with this meeting, and I want to thank my fellow counselors uh, for their cooperation over these years, uh, as well as the town staff, all of whom have been exceedingly supportive over the years. And I won't name each one because I have not met a single staff member who hasn't been completely supportive, and I, it's a very impressive. The town is blessed to have so many fine public servants. In fact, I've met so many great people in the Scarborough community the past six years, it really has been one of the highlights of having served. Uh, and I look forward to serving the town again in any way I can. Scarborough has a great future, uh, and I encourage folks out there to uh, participate in town government. It's a very, very rewarding uh, exercise, so thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I have my comments written also as since this is really the last day of this current council. Um, and I wanted to thank Peter for his service as chair uh, this year. God love you uh, for doing that job. It's, it's not easy, having served as vice chair before myself. I um, also wanted to thank uh, Katie for her service uh, on the council, uh, your hard work and dedication. Um, it's been much appreciated and serving as vice chair this year. Um, and I particularly wanted to thank uh, Mr. Donovan for his uh, six years of service to the town. Uh, he's done a yeoman's work as far as I'm concerned. Um, I know he spent a lot of time in Tom's office, much to Tom's dismay. <laughs> time. Some people find that, but anyway, he did. He, he, I've worked with a number of counselors and different councils, and he just went above and beyond a good part of the time. And I know he took a lot of grief and aggravation from some people in town. That's what happens when you're willing to do the work and get out there and, and, and try to make differences. Um, I couldn't begin to list the number of contributions he's made to the town. To me, one of the top ones that I was just like, wow, was the senior tax rebate program that he came up with with another uh, citizen in, in town, which the state of Maine, I've, I've served on the Legislative Policy Committee since I've started on the council, and we were at the envy of every other town uh, in Maine regarding that. Um, uh, the development programs we've done, um, getting Scarborough Downs off the ground, uh, the public safety building, I mean, just I could go on and on and on. Uh, he's a tireless worker. He's a great friend. Uh, I know there's a misconception out there with the public that town councilors don't get along, but we really do. I mean, it's just the nature of the job. If you don't get along, you can't get anything done. Uh, but we do. Um, so I want to thank Bill for his service, and I am very, very envious of the fact that I'm sure you'll be spending a lot of time down south golfing while the rest of us are up here struggling with the winter. So thank you. As I did most of the day today. Oh, <laughs> yeah, rub it in. <laughs> Councilor Fuller? Um, yeah, I guess um, 
share a lot of the sentiments that have already been said, but I want to thank the town and citizens themselves for entrusting me to serve. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege and not one that I take for granted. I um, also want to thank my fellow counselors, past and present. Um, you know, I, despite our disagreements, I have a deep respect for anybody who steps up to do it because it's not um, the fame and money and glory, I can tell you that. <laughs> it is um, a lot of hours, uh, a lot of uh, times when you're just, you don't really want to sit down and read that packet, but you know you need to, um, and uh, a, a lot of commitment. So I have deep respect for everybody who has served. Uh, and will serve. And uh, certainly congratulations to um, Betsy and Ken. Wish you the best of luck. Uh, Ken, I suggest you take that seat down here, and Betsy, you'll be better suited here, is my you know, thoughts on that. Um, and we just keep the Johnson voice apart, right? And, uh, and then also, I wanted to thank uh, Tom and town staff. Um, as has already been mentioned, uh, always available uh, to help uh, guide us through you know, learning how to, the first year, especially when you're learning to draft an amendment or following Robert's rules and all of the kind of things that you just don't think about when you run for council, all of a sudden you're sitting back and go, oh God, what do I do? Do I second that? Do I, you know? Um, so the patience and uh, guidance with that is much appreciated. And that's really it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, uh, so I'll lay it on a little bit thick as well. So we'll... Um, <laughs> So, Katie Foley, first of all, I, I, you, you were one of the uh, primary reasons why I ran for council. I'm um, sorry about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, just when I got more involved in town politics and I listened to your unwavering um, integrity and uh, willingness to speak your mind, whether people agreed or not, uh, I think that you've, there's some, not only in, in your commentary, but in your votes. I mean, you were the deciding vote for the CEA. There, I mean, you've made some very tough decisions, um, and um, you're not afraid to, to go with what you truly believe. So I have an immense amount of respect for that. Um, you are also my council mother. You did kick me when I was supposed to raise my hand or tell me if I, so that, that was useful. Uh, <laughs> Once I got on council, Bill, I, I learned I learned more from you than 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 anybody else. I mean, I really enjoyed our times together, our our meetings and having tea at uh, Fo Hung, and uh, you have a brilliant mind, and you you know it it's things at executive session, the points that you bring up, the thoughts that you think. It's very it's very clear that you're moving the conversation forward and getting us challenging us to think of different angles. Um, so I have a deep respect for the work that you've done here. So. To both of you, thank you, um, and um, I think you guys should enjoy some much-needed relaxed time. So we shall. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I didn't know any of you before uh, joined the council, and I didn't watch a lot of meetings, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and Would you have made a different decision? <laughs> I, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I can say. Uh, being on this side of the desk and spending some time with all of you, everybody brings their own attributes to the table and talents and skills. And I have a lot of respect for both Bill <coughs> and, and Katie. Um, and a deeper appreciation for the skills and talents that they bring and, and have brought to the table here. So I think uh, it's a sad day, right? I, I haven't known you for that long, but now we have to go and do uh, some new things and welcome some new members, uh, Betsy and Ken, to the table and learn from them and, and see what talents and skills they can bring to the table. So uh, change is the spice of life, and mm -hmm. it's a core part of our democracy. So uh, I, I'm sad and excited uh, for what lies ahead. Thank you. And I guess for me, I'll certainly echo everything that has been said, and both Councillor Foley and Donovan, thank you for your service, and I think you've really made a difference to the town. Um, you think back in time and sort of the issues we've addressed and other things. So. Thank you. And I, you know, again, I'll echo, and then I'll kind of turn to our community, and really this is kind of the message. I had written this today, but I, but I think it's really telling. So what I'd say is, you know, congratulations to the winning candidates all across the board. And also thank you for all the other candidates. Um, it is really a daunting task to run for office. It takes significant investment of time and emotions and resources, and I'm pretty sure you guys are both exhausted after coming through the process you have. So anybody that will step up. And so for me, our democracy is really dependent on individuals stepping forward, 
to run for elected positions, to provide a choice to voters about who they think is going to best represent them in, in whatever it is that they do. And I think that's really important. And so what I would really plead this year, and I've, I've been through sort of five cycles of this, for me it was, it was a particularly challenging sort of electoral season, and that's because I think it's the power of, of social media. And they were just, this year in particular, some very active social media campaigns that went from first discussing simple differences of opinions, which are fine to kind of argue or talk about difference of opinions, but it started to go into candidates' personal attacks and in, in attacking individuals and in some cases even attacking their children. And I think that's really kind of a, a, a bridge too far, a line that's crossed. Um, so my message is I really hope going forward we can all agree to disagree civilly do it respectfully, do it based on viewpoints and not vilify the candidates that are running, that are trying to do what they think is in the best interest of the town from their perspective. And, and I know some say this is only politics, there's a saying, you know, all is fair and love and war, and apparently politics. And some say, well, it's just politics, it doesn't matter, tomorrow everybody forgets it. And, and I will say, I can't speak for others. But last spring, my son, who had some issues at the time, was targeted by somebody politi for political gain and said some things that were really untrue about my son. And it came at a really difficult time. And for me, I don't forget that. And it's hard to forgive that. When, when you are targeting a child of a parent that you disagree with or, or there's some issue, and I just it's really an appeal to our community. Let's, let's be civil. Let's agree to disagree respectfully. We're on a new pathway, so let's, as we have said, let's make the most of it. But it's, all, it's up to all of us to change sort of the culture in our community so we can agree to disagree civilly and exchange ideas and move forward. So um, and with that, I guess I'll conclude. Um, and looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. All those I want to do it one last time. Oh. Some, oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, don't vote. Well, second. Okay. No, I don't know who seconded it, but. John. John. Okay, there awesome. you go. Thank you. Eight. Can you buzz it off? Thanks. No, 18. No, no it's passed. It's Clucci, which means you two.